This is KGW News at 11. Thank you for being here. I'm Galen Edlin. We begin with a man who helped make Oregon what it is today. He is no longer with us tonight. Jerry Frank passed away this morning at 98 years old. And whether you grew up here like I did or recently moved here to make this home, you don't have to go far to find that his impact runs deep. Take it from the man himself. My roots are very deep in Oregon. Generations dating back to before Oregon was a state. Jerry Frank's great-great-grandfather walked to Portland from California in the 1800s. And established a one-man store. That became the Meyer and Frank department store. Brings back so many wonderful memories. It's unparalleled in Oregon history. Carrie Timchuk is executive director of the Oregon Historical Society. There will never be another Jerry Frank. And a friend of Jerry's. His story is just such an American one. The World War II veteran, uh, then returned to work in the family business, and, uh, and then into public service. Jerry ran Meyer and Frank until it was sold in the 60s, then served his friend Governor Mark Hatfield as chief of staff when Hatfield went to D.C. as Oregon senator. Adapting to the needs of the people. And you can't forget the cake. Jerry served as the sole judge of the chocolate cake contest at the Oregon State Fair for 60 years. A lot of years and a lot of cakes. More than 100 cakes in a day sometimes. Two bites each, by the way. The key to long life, chocolate cake. It's true, and that's what Jerry said, chocolate. Jerry was also a writer, sharing the state's best sights and food for the Oregonian. Oh, but also... He's the author of the best-selling guidebook to New York City in history. No matter where travel took him... Oregon was the love of his life. Jerry always came home. His philanthropy helping raise half a billion dollars for organizations here, including Providence, home to the Jerry Frank Center for Children's Care at St. Vincent Medical Center. You could look in every corner of Oregon, and if there was something good happening, Jerry was somehow involved. The Rotary Club of Salem dedicated its amphitheater to Jerry last year, Governor Kate Brown said in a statement, For decades to come, Oregonians and others will be able to learn about a person who contributed so much to this great state we call home. What message do you hope his legacy can carry forward? One person can make a difference. He made a difference in so many ways for so many people, for so many causes, for so many communities. Just through sheer uh, willpower and enthusiasm and perseverance. And gratitude for a life lived to the fullest. How many people have that wonderful opportunity? Hmm. We've got more information on KGW.com. In the meantime, a big mess is now cleared up tonight. Traffic on I-5 was backed up for hours because a truck carrying cows tipped over. This was today around exit 286, just north of Wilsonville. Some of the cows were on the road, forcing traffic to stop. Fire crews said there were 31 cows in the trailer when it flipped over. Some were fine, others were badly hurt and had to be put down on the scene. And of course, others did not make it. Well, it was really disturbing seeing a bunch of injured cows and yeah. But yeah, you don't want to see this happen to animals. Um, you know, we're supposed to be good stewards. Accidents happen, but um, yeah, it's just horrible. Mm, it is horrible. Now, the driver luckily is OK and did not need medical treatment. The cows that could walk were herded down the road to another trailer. Well, as gun violence in Portland rises, more police officers are having to help victims before medical help arrives. Our Catherine Cook spoke with two officers who saved one victim's life. Uh, all we knew for certain was that somebody had been shot. Portland police officers Justin Raphael and Tyler Wyatt. So we don't know at this point if the shooter's still there. If are used to walking into the unknown. But on the night of March 8th, just one thing was certain. It is clear that he is in grave condition. He's going in and out of consciousness. A young man lay dying in a pool of his own blood, a bullet in his thigh through his femoral artery. That is a grave wound that will kill you within a matter of minutes if untreated. It happened on Southeast 92nd near Powell Boulevard. There had been gunshots and calls to 911. When the officers got there, about a dozen people yelled for help and motioned them over to the victim. He was lying outside an apartment doorway with a gun on the ground nearby. We did not know where the shooter was, but we have to make a decision to sacrifice kind of 
our own safety in those moments and go into this scene to begin to save a life. The officers drew on their police bureau medical training. They all carry these individual first aid kits. Officer Wyatt reached for the hemostatic gauze designed to stop the bleeding. Yeah, I carry this on my belt. While Officer Wyatt packed the wound, Officer Raphael applied a tourniquet. At one point, he just asked if I'd hold his hand, which um, was a, a pretty intense moment. Um, and I did. I held his hand and I just told him, hey, keep squeezing my hand, stay with me. He held the man's hand, even as medics loaded him into the ambulance minutes later. Minutes, the officer's first aid bought them. I think that gets lost on a lot of people that sometimes as officers, we're the first component of that emergency aid. Police say last year, 388 people in Portland were injured by gunfire. 90 of them died. This year, already 66 people have been hurt by gun violence, including the man these officers helped save. They haven't heard from him since, but they hope he hears this. I'm glad you're still with us. Um, I would do it again, and I'm happy you're here. Officers have not made any arrests in this case. It's still an open investigation. If you have any information, you're asked to call the Portland Police Bureau. In Southeast Portland, Katherine Cook, KGW News. And as Portland tries to clean up Old Town and Chinatown, another local business says it's tired of waiting. You may know about Mimi's Fresh Teas. Its love over hate shirts became a symbol during civil unrest after the death of George Floyd in 2020. Well, last summer, the owner, Camila Adams, opened a storefront in Old Town, but says now she's tired of the trash and crime there, and she wants to leave. She says even though there's a 90-day plan to clean up the streets, if it doesn't go well, she's going to pack up. I really do hope that they continue to do that to um, just to help and support a lot of businesses, businesses down here in Old Town. You know, this is a rich cultural district, and... I just, real, just feel strongly that we all deserve uh, better than what I have seen on the streets down here. So if it doesn't work out, she is considering another downtown location or heading to the suburbs. While some businesses consider leaving downtown, others hope for a big payday this week. The NCAA tournament is coming to the Moda Center this week, bringing hordes of fans with it, as you can imagine. Our Tim Gordon explores how this could boost local businesses in need. It may not be Oregon State's year to be in the NCAA men's basketball tournament, but March Madness is coming to Portland. OSU is the college host of first and second round games playing here this coming week. Eight teams will be competing at Moda Center. And when you think about the number of teams that come in and their travel parties, uh, not, not just the, the actual team, the bands, the cheerleaders, but their fan base, uh, the economic impact is, is uh, substantial. Scott Barnes is OSU's director good, of athletics. Sir. He says the timing couldn't be better to welcome fans to Portland. With mask requirements now off, it's the first time in three seasons that March Madness games will welcome arenas full of fans to cheer on their teams. State sports promoter Sports Oregon says the teams alone will fill more than 3,100 room nights at seven designated hotels from the Lloyd District to downtown. It's a big deal for Portland right now. Brandon Bowden runs Spirit of 77 near the Moda Center. He says the tournament will bring them a huge amount of much needed business in just a few days time. It doesn't seem like a lot of things are coming to Portland uh, convention wise and so uh, Something like this is, is big for a business like ours that relies on uh, big events to, to come into town. And downtown inside the Heathman Hotel, Azar Indulgences looks forward to selling more treats to visitors. Christine Azar says things have already been picking up. There's a lot more foot traffic downtown, a lot more people attending the shows, concerts, things like that. So things are definitely I don't want to say back to normal, but on their way there. Certainly Portland has its challenges and some business is gone for good. But the business of college basketball will help. These are the sorts of events that sort of galvanize the city and, and uh, attract visitors from all over the country. Tim Gordon, KGW News. There are three sessions of basketball and tickets are still available for the first two on Thursday, but sales are picking up now that the teams are announced. We're going to have a full list for you of who's coming in about 30 minutes right here on Sports Sunday.